All right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, oops, here. Let's update our date. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, welcome to our North Lawndale and West Southwest Roundtable for March. Brian Hacker from the Department of Planning and Development and uh, joined by some of my colleagues here um, from DPD and then CDOT as well. Uh, but I did want to take the opportunity to um, introduce Raquel Vega from our team, who's a new uh, DPD hire, and she's joining us on the West region. She's an urban designer. Raquel, you want to jump in and say hello? Hello, everybody. Um, it's good to be here on the team. I um, look forward to working with all of you. Um, my background is in architecture and construction, and um, uh, also um, studied urban planning. So I'm um, glad to be here with everybody. It definitely is. And then, uh, and then we've also got, uh, I think folks no. have probably seen uh, Maggie uh, Cassidy before. She's going to be talking to us about the Shy Block Builder uh, okay. program uh, later on. The agenda. And then, uh, I wish let's I see. Would. Uh, Chanel, okay, I'm going to mute you. Sorry. But uh, since we do have um, uh, Raquel on the team here joining us new, and it's not a huge group here, uh, if everyone can go and do a quick round of introductions, that'd be nice. And then Raquel can uh, get a, uh, an idea who's in attendance for, for these meetings. So um, uh, Alderwoman Scott, why don't you start, even though we talked yesterday. I'm introducing myself. <laughs> I can't hear you. Oh, sorry. I said just say, uh, we're just doing quick hellos. Uh, since... Hi, everyone. Monique Scott, Alderwoman of the 24th Ward. Nice to be on the call. And here, how about uh, I'll call people, folks out? Uh, Mara. Oh. Hi, I'm, I'm Mara Ruff. I'm Vice President of Government Affairs at Sunny Chicago. And Matt, since you're looking so smooth with those shades on. <laughs> yeah, these are uh, when it gets in the sunlight, it gets, that's what it does. It just gets dark. Uh, Matt Harvey uh, with New Covenant CDC, Corridor Manager for Ogden. Uh, how about Kristen? Uh, okay, April. Hi, good afternoon. I'm April uh, Campbell with the North Lawndale Community Coordinating Council. I'm their community organizer as well as their engagement coordinator. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Caroline. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Caroline Rendon with LISC Chicago. And Deborah. Good afternoon, Deborah Wesley. <clears throat> I'm with Sinai Chicago. I'm president of Sinai Community Institute and executive vice president for community outreach. And uh, Rochelle? Hi, everybody. Rochelle Jackson, chair of the NLCCC Transportation Infrastructure Committee. And uh, Chanel? Uh, welcome to the meeting. Uh, if you could say hello, introduce yourself, please. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Chanel. I am the community outreach coordinator for the public information office here at the um, city department of public health. So I just saw the meeting invite and decided I'll listen in. Well, welcome. Thanks for thanks for joining us. Uh, and then also, of course, last but not least, we got James Harris from the West Region. We all know James. Uh, and then, oh, we also had uh, Blanche or joining us as well. She, oh. 
Hey, Blanche, would you like to say hello to the group since we got a couple of new faces? Hi, how are you? All right. Well, I'll move us on to our agenda for today. Uh, so we've got uh, CDOT. Uh, Vanessa is going to uh, back today talking about the Ogden Avenue corridor improvement project. And like I mentioned, we'll have Maggie Cassidy up to talk uh, some shy block builder. And I'll give a quick update on the uh, Invest Southwest projects in the community. And then we can just open it up in case anyone else has any comments or announcements or anything like that. So, um, yeah, Vanessa, uh, floor is yours here. You go ahead. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, everyone, for having me. My name is Vanessa Rizari. I'm a coordinating planner with the Chicago Department of Transportation, and I'm the project manager for the Ogden Avenue Corridor Improvement Project. We've met before. Uh, we introduced the project to the round table back in January 27th, I believe, at the last meeting. And we just wanted to follow up with you um, that we will be hold, holding our first public meeting um, in coordination with Alder Woman Scott's office. Thank you, Alder Woman Scott, for your assistance on that. Um, the first public meeting is going to be on April 12th between 6 and 8 p.m. at Stone Temple Church at 3622 West Douglas Boulevard. Um, during the meeting, we're going to have the project team just give a brief description and introduction of the project for those that have not um, sort of being part of our meetings as of yet, but we will also provide an opportunity for community input. We will have boards and activities for community members to give us feedback as to what they wanna see on the Ogden Avenue corridor. Um, we will have food available and we'll be providing a kid station with coloring activities. Um, so we hope to see you there. We look forward to hearing the community about what their vision is for this quarter and this is the first of many meetings um so we look forward to that and if you have any questions i'm here for the next few minutes thank you uh, what's the address of the church again and you said april 11 right april 12 april 6, 12. To, okay. 6 to 8 wednesday and three six two two west douglas boulevard other woman scott um i don't know if you want to share any other words about the meeting i know it's uh, we're coordinating with your ward night correct um so yeah i would love for the community partners on this um meeting to share the flyer if you need it um if you need me to send it out um i can send i can make sure that my staff send it sends it out um but I am excited about this project and I would like everybody to have their input because most times when things happen in the community, uh, people feel slighted. And so I don't want anyone to feel slighted. This is our community and there are three older persons that are on this project. It's myself, um, Irving, and also Michael Rodriguez that both share Ogden. So the, the, the project is going to go from Pulaski all the way to Western. So there are three different older people. Um, I took the initiative to make sure because most of the 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 reimagining will be in the 24th ward. So I would need my 24th ward uh, residents to come out. So I need my partners to make sure that we push this heavy so that they can come out and have their input. Thank you. Um, I should have mentioned that we are starting to roll out today the public meeting announcement. Um, we have shared the information with the aldermen's offices so they can share with their constituents. Um, we will be sending out an e-announcement to the community advisory group later today, and we'll be sending it also out to our stakeholder list. Um, so if you want to be in that list, please, um, feel free to go to our website, improveogden.org, and you should be able to make sure you sort of let us know that you wanna be on our distribution list. Um, and we look forward to just having a conversation, an initial conversation on what people wanna see in the quarter. Thank you. Okay, uh, anyone else have questions? 
for this one. And then uh, I guess, Vanessa, you sent me the uh, file for this. So I could uh, distribute that to everyone on the, um, I'll send out the flyer when I send the uh, PDF of the um, presentation. Uh, Brian, I'll so. send you the full set. We have social media texts. We have flyers in both English and Spanish and the social media uh, graphics. So we'll send the whole kit with you and you can that certainly be, share with the round table. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah. If you can send that over to me, uh, ideally today, because I might send stuff out today from the, the meeting and I can just all put it in the same email to the, the group. And I just want to... Um, because Elder Woman Scott mentioned the boundaries. Uh, we are extending it to Roosevelt a bit just because of um, just the way this, the roadway works in that area. And we'll be talking a lot about that at the public meeting. And Elder Woman Scott, if you'd like me to reach out and have uh, a separate discussion about that, I can let you know. But it just, in terms of the terminus, the end of the project, it just made more sense to move. It doesn't include the through intersection of Roosevelt, but it gets to Roosevelt. Okay, good, good news then. Okay, yeah, so uh, I see the comments here. Um, Will, uh, if you leave it with, I mean, I'm assuming it'll probably be like a PDF, but I'll try to remember to uh, convert some of these to JPEG, or I don't, I don't know. I guess it depends on uh, what I get from Vanessa, but we'll make sure that you got a lot of material and things to be able to work with. And uh, yeah, come over with the, um, send it over with the slide deck when that goes out. Great, I'll stick around the rest of the meeting just to listen in. So if anybody has questions, feel free to put it in the chat and I can answer. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I'll try to be out there for that meeting as well. Brian, I don't have a question for Vanessa. I have more of a comment. Vanessa, are you welcoming comments or only questions? Oh, e either, it's, it's good to have conversation. So go ahead. Okay, um, so I, I don't know. I'm not quite sure where the other public meetings are um, staked or position to happen, but I would like to suggest that one is um, in localization to like to Ogden Street. Um, I am particularly a neighbor that lives off of Ogden. My family has been there for like 60 years or plus. So um, it'd be great to have one that's like a little more localized to the um, actual revitalization project. Sorry, my puppies are in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I have dogs, I love my dogs, sorry. <laughs> We, we had multiple locations in mind, and this was sort of the location that was chosen for this meeting. Um, but we'll, you know, we had seat our open to conversations as to where this would be. And just so you know, I am the, as the older person, I live on Ogden and Albany. So trust me, we'll have a meeting on Ogden. Yay, thank you. Uh, Vanessa Blanche here. Uh, my question, you say you're extending to Roosevelt Road. Mm -hmm. Would it also be from Western to Pulaski or what part, uh, how much of Roosevelt? It, it doesn't include the intersection at Roosevelt. Which Instead of Pulaski to Western, it'll be Pulaski to Roosevelt. I'm not, I don't have clarity. You say oh. from Pulaski to Roosevelt? Mm -hmm. That. Oh, so you're going to go all the way down Pulaski. So you go to Pulaski and we'll get, I don't have a map in front of me now to show, but it'll go to Pulaski, including the intersection at Pulaski, and it'll go to Roosevelt, to the southwest corner of Roosevelt. So it doesn't include intersection improvements at Roosevelt. So the south side of Roosevelt. Correct. And we're doing this because and of, then this, from, because of from the service Pulaski drives. And Roosevelt, how far east? I would have to open up my map. If you give me one second, I will look at that because I don't want to give you wrong information. It all had to do with your section. Your Ogden Avenue section changes because it goes from having service drives to not having service drives. So we had to do it because of technical reasons, right? What it will make most sense. Um, 
to yeah. end the project. Talking about Rose, but Roosevelt. Okay, go right. ahead. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Let me um let me see if I can open up a, and we'll get into this at the public meeting. Sorry, I wasn't ready to have that detailed discussion, but I can quickly pivot. Let me um can everyone see the map up on the screen? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So previously it was going from western to Pulaski. Not to steal your thunder here, Vanessa, but just to maybe no, like okay. make it a little bit easier. So we're just talking about an additional block here. Mm, correct. Correct. Up going from Western up to uh, to Roosevelt there. So now oh, we're getting like kind of towards the, okay, right. the medical district. Um, okay. And I'm trying to open up a map that maybe shows that if I have one in the background here. Okay. Yeah. If you're familiar with the location of the dopest bar and grills, you'll see on Google Maps. <laughs> I, I saw that name. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So no, only, uh, it'll, yeah, it's only it's, that southern part. Yeah, well, additional block. Mm -hmm. I forgot Roosevelt. Roosevelt meets at Ogden from right there. So I was so confused. I don't know why. We just so was that. <laughs> yes, we just went past uh, Western. That's it. So we're going past the McDonald's. Correct. McDonald's and so McDonald's. one. Okay, got you. One block past Western. Yeah, look, I was Google. confused too. Yeah. So it's a, it's where that McDonald's is on um Ogden and uh, Roosevelt Road yeah yeah okay, okay. and well, you know see. that's uh that's right at the the western boundary of the the medical district so you know I like as we define it or and also as like the the state um uh I can't remember, like you know the state uh, like mandate or like whatever that uh established the um medical district authority because they're their own kind of quasi -govern governmental agency so it's anything that falls east of uh, Oakley there. So this would take it right up to the the boundary of the medical district, which seems like a, you know, a practical location to, you know, carry the um, the project to. Because it does change quite a bit there as well. Once you cross Roosevelt, it gets uh, much more narrow. Oh, yeah. As you can see on the, the screen here. So if I can show a map really quick on my screen. Yeah. Uh, oh, I can't do that. And we'll get into this at the meeting, but it's just sort of helpful. And thank you for pulling that aerial up because that's that helps. Yeah, you should be able to share, Vanessa. OK, give me one second. Where's my share? Here we go. Hmm. Um, do you see my screen? Oops, not that. Hello? Oh no. Am I still can you still hear me? Yeah. I can yeah, we hear can. you and see. Okay, perfect. Um so all we did is was Pulaski to Western. And all we did was include that leg up to Roosevelt. We're still keeping Pulaski in. Does that help any? I was just curious if Central Park and Roosevelt was included in that. So the what, I'm sorry? No. Uh, What'd she say? No, it's only gonna go to Ogden from Ogden to Roosevelt. So where, you know, where I just told you where- The that angle, yeah. Right, it's gonna be where you see the blue line, that's the project part. Yeah, yeah, okay. okay. All right, so Thanks, it's face Monique. south. Mm -hmm. And now I have to find where my stop share button is. There we go. And to the previous comment from April, you know, I mean, we got some friends here from Sinai, and you know, we've also, uh, you know, got close contact with uh, Mondale Christian folks and Pastor Brooks and. So maybe we can uh, work with some of our, our, our partners that are located on the corridor to try to find a uh, location for a, a future. Not to nominate anyone <laughs> against their will, but it seems like we would have options to, 
to make something like that happen. So a good suggestion. Um, okay, uh, let me just pull slide deck back up here and I will hand it off to <clears throat> DPD's very own Maggie Cassidy. Hi everyone, um, thank you for having me here today. My name is Maggie Cassidy. I am the database manager for the city's uh, land inventory. And I have been working on rolling out the Shy Block Builder platform uh, for city land sales. We had an open application period from uh, mid-November to the beginning of February this year. And now we are working through those applications um, to check them out for feasibility and suitability and uh, bring some recommendations back to um, the older people and the community. Um, so th these numbers may look different if, than any you would, would have seen potentially. Um, I'm sort of looking at you, older women from, I know you had a briefing yesterday, but these, this is the entire North Lawndale community area, irrespective of the ward boundaries. And it is also um, applications as opposed to um, the parcels that were applied for. So for instance, the uh, City Lots for Working Families program, each of those 34 applications includes multiple parcels. So I just thought for simplicity, this is how we could look at it today. Um, <clears throat> and I'm also realizing that there must be a mistake on here because I don't think we had both 23 commercial and 23 open space. Uh, and yet, that's what it says. Well, I'll follow up. Um, but we are working diligently to uh, review these applications and prepare more detailed reports. And we are um, on track to meet our internal deadline of getting folks more information, at the applicants more information by, um, let's call it the end of next month. That might be too much specificity, but that is our goal. Um, and I think we are on track to meet it. Um, we also have updated the shyblockbuilder.com website with information about which lots uh, received applications. And we also have brought back the I'm interested button, which is a great resource for folks who may be interested in purchasing land in the future. Um, if you go on to shyblockbuilder.com right now, you can browse around and um, indicate interest in parcels, which were they to become available in the future, you'd be notified. It's also a way for us in DPD to gather information about where a lot of interest may exist and um, direct our efforts at bringing more property online for sale where there is interest. So please um, express interest early and often. Uh, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that I can. Thanks, what is Maggie. side yard? Side yard means um, it's like the ANLAP, the adjacent neighbor's land acquisition. So that's folks buying the lot directly next door to their home. I have a question, Maggie. Um, is the rubric or like the scoring mechanism um, that the city is using to evaluate um, the different perspective, I guess, whatever, landowners, commercial, market, race, side yard, et cetera, will that be, um, will there be any point of transparency around that? I think that there will. Um, you know, I apologize because I feel like there was probably a very straightforward answer to that question and I just don't know, but I believe it, the answer is yes. Like what the, what the questions we were, were looking at are as opposed to what people's individual scores may be, but yeah. Okay, sounds good, thank you. And we will have deep uh, deep con uh, discussions on the, the side yards and open spaces because then we're back, that's almost a 60 plus lots again that are open that they wanna park cars and do all of that. And so um, I'm not really, I'm not really for the side yards um, because then that's not creating housing in which we need. It's then just keeping open space once again and we're back to square one again of trying to uh, minimize the lots.
Okay, I'm going to just drop my email address in the chat. So if uh, folks think of any questions, um, but I hope to be back with you uh, in the very near future to say, this is this is the, what this is really what's happening. Not just what we're looking at, but uh, where we're moving forward. So we really are looking forward to that. Yeah, thanks a lot, Maggie. Um, and definitely uh, Maggie and as well as uh, Elaine Batson from DPD who works with her uh, deserve a ton of uh, 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 kudos and you know, big round of applause for like all the work that you put in to getting Shy Block Builder up and running. And uh, also to in advance of all the work that you have cut out for you for reviewing all these applications because it's a lot, um, but it just shows how much of a demand there was and how much interest there was in this resource. So um, it's, you know, we're in good position going forward having, uh, you know, uh, such an organized outlet for it and, you know, easy application process, or easier application process, let's say, than before. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, um, you know, I, I know that we've heard uh, a lot of interest uh, in city-owned land and these meetings in the past, so feel free to, to share this resource with other folks who might not be familiar with it in the neighborhoods. I mean, North Lawndale, you know, has the, the most... Uh, Ernest, take it easy on the bag, man. It's like it was a loud bag behind me here. Uh, um, North Ondale, you know, has uh, what, like over a thousand uh, vacant city lots. So uh, there's a lot, uh, a lot of opportunity, a lot of uh, land to work with here. So um, we can continue to, you know, take, discuss it and uh, take questions in, in future meetings. But uh, yeah, we're off, we're off to a, a great start. So yeah, thanks again, Maggie. You're welcome. Can I actually add one more thing? Um, just in terms of the, the lot volume and also, you know, Alderwoman Scott's point about what we're looking for, a big takeaway, and this is just sort of food for thought, a big takeaway that I personally am learning from this open application round that we just concluded is um, that I think the open, open application where we're taking in various different types of proposals at the same time, may not be the most efficient way to do this moving forward. And I'm thinking to, that we may try to move in a direction where it's like, okay, this is homeowner side yard season. This is um, affordable homeownership housing season. This is commercial development season. And so we can sort of like tailor the outreach um, and the stock, the land stock that we're offering and how we evaluate like more to the different types of sales that um, might be out there instead of uh, kind of putting all the eggs in one basket. So uh, that's just sort of like where the thought process is right now, my personal thought process. Um, and I just thought I would share that because I thought maybe that would spark things for people moving forward. So thank you. Thanks for the platform. And then Megan, go ahead, I'll do it. I'm sorry. It makes sense uh, because I want the community to be excited for this. Like this right. is a thousand lots that we have an opportunity to reshape, restore the 24th war. I mean, it's really exciting when you think of just rebuilding a community. And I just, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about this where some people think, oh, this is trickery. It's no trickery. It's either you have the the, the money and the working capital to do something like this. It's just an amazing time. I mean, usually we're landlocked where we don't have the space to build things and we have to go into abandoned storefronts to rebuild. But we have something that suburbs usually have, and that's land. And I am so excited about this for our community because it is, it is an amazing time that we can build in our own community. It's like you're building in your own back door. And we need to think of that and not harboring on land and build on it. It is an amazing experience and time. Yes for our community. And I need people to be excited like I am about this because it is truly amazing what we can do uh, with the power of people coming together and building and restoring this, you know, a 60 plus year deprived community. Alderman, I, I, I totally agree with you. But my main question, I want how long can whoever is getting that vacant lot, I understand the next door lot, but how long can they sit on that lot before they start developing? So with the side yards and the, the concept from the adjacent neighbors, 
that actually has a 10 year, um, wow. no, no build, no sell seems long to me. The, the large lots program from a couple of years ago came with a five-year restriction. Um, I don't know. I have, I don't really have a comment about that. Um, well, the but, reason why I asked, Meg, is mm -hmm. because in the past, and I've, I've been a resident of Mundale for many years before I left, people would buy our land up and they would just sit on it. Right. Just right. sit on, did nothing with, they didn't even follow the city guidelines of fencing it up. And, and I don't want our community to end up back in the same position. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. That's my Much progress. agreed. Yeah, I, I really hear you about that, you know, and regrettably, the, the city itself is uh, a big problem in that arena um, in terms of land holding that is not well maintained. Um, so, yeah, I, and part of my also my thinking around doing maybe more targeted marketing, targeted outreach um, is to think about what kind of support for buyers can go along with that. Um, again, these ideas, you know, looking into the future, but that, that's sort of where I'm, I'm leaning because I agree we don't want that. Um, I will say that the Block Builder platform and what the way we're looking at this round of land sales, it's, we're preferencing um, a ready to go projects to build and we're preferencing close neighbors. There's really not a path for an outside investor to buy a lot that they're not going to move. We, that's just not something that we're entertaining right now. Um, but, you know, it's a difficult, it's a difficult balance always. Yeah, thanks, Maggie. I was going to just jump in and bluntly more say that there are protections against speculation and folks coming in and just swooping in and like, you know, grabbing, like say like investors coming in, grabbing, you know, whatever, like 30 lots and then sitting on them till the land appreciates and then, you know, walking, walk away, you know, after like, you know, turning a huge profit and, and things like that. It's there, there's, I mean, we've heard that a lot of times and, you know, so we're sensitive to it here, but, you know, it's, it's built in, into the process to a certain extent. Any other uh, shy block builder questions, comments? We can also to uh, have Maggie come back and talk about this in the future as there's, you know, um, the uh, application uh, window opens up again, or if there's updates on the on the program as well. So this is kind of a kind of a big deal around DPD lately. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, everyone. Right. Thanks. Okay. Um, really have much more on the agenda here. I just wanted to give a couple of uh, quick um, updates on our Best Southwest kind of like uh, cornerstone projects in uh, North Lawndale. So uh, what was it? It was, I guess it would have been like uh, last month that we did the uh, ceremonial groundbreaking for the Roosevelt and Costner uh, industrial project. So the 280,000 square foot buildings. I just had a uh, meeting this morning with Related Midwest, the main developer for that, and they are um, chugging along here and uh, plan to submit uh, for building permits, um, I believe it, either in the next week or the following week. So uh, we're getting very close to real shovels being in the ground there, as opposed to the uh, ceremonial shovels that we previously had done. And on top of that, we uh, also will be getting uh, plans for the innovation center and open space portions of it that front Roosevelt Road. So that's a, a different phase of the project from the uh, industrial component uh, that those are the buildings that will be um, uh, done in partnership with Black Men United and uh, New Covenant CDC, which uh, Rodney's not here with us today. He's on taking a, a well-earned vacation right now. Uh, but yeah, we'll have plans in for uh, site plan approval review for that component uh, very soon as well, probably like again, about the next couple of weeks. So uh, they're, you know, moving right along with, with phase two. And I can say just from like looking at the sort of first draft of those plans, 
that I saw this morning. It's a really handsome uh, open space along Roosevelt. That's got some nice, you know, outdoor gathering space, and uh, it would be, you know, uh, just night and day improvement for that uh, that section of Roosevelt compared to what's out there today. So uh, more to come on that. We'll keep you posted as we, you know, continue to check off boxes on uh, bringing that project to fruition. And uh, for Lawndale Redefined, the Ogden Avenue RFP project, this one I know has been kind of uh, sort of stuck on the pursuing financing, but, uh, you know, we've got updated uh, updated budget from them and they're uh, going to be pursuing funding, uh, tax credit funding from the Department of Housing very shortly. So we're hoping to also have uh, some more good news in terms of uh, funding sources for that project to, to keep that moving along as well. Um, so yeah, quite a bit going on in, in the community, uh, but that's all I've got for our projects here. Uh, but if anybody else has any questions about the Invest Southwest projects or just want to um, give an announcement or Did you ask any other questions. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, Rochelle, sorry, you got your hand up. I didn't notice that. Hold on. Hi, I have a, um, I don't know if it's more of a comment than a statement, but um, the last groundbreaking that you had for the Roosevelt Costner um, site, I know there was not, a lot of people were not invited, but the community knew about it and there was a lot of anger because people couldn't get in. Is there a way that, you know, when things like that happen, that it could be accessible to the community or at least an announcement saying that it, it's RSVP or only or only certain people are invited and you'll host something else later on for the community to keep that kind of thing from happening because there is a lot of anger on social media about that. And a lot of people claim they didn't even know that that was happening, that, you know, something is going to be built there. I mean, we as the community, we as, you know, agents for NLCCC, we've been telling people about these meetings and all the stuff that's going on in the community, but people still say they didn't hear about it. So maybe they are just not tuned in. To what's happening, or I, it just wanted to be a troublemaker. Yeah, I don't know. I, but, well, oh, I, I, I can, let me answer this, Brian. Okay. So I put on my automatic page. Okay. I put on my personal page and my automatic page. I know, and, right? And I shared it. Okay, I so why can you say it. people didn't know about it if you shared it? The person but, that you're specifically talking about was not invited purposely. So you can't make trouble one day and then think you're going to come in the next day. So that was that was that was my doing, and so you can't make trouble one day and then think you you got you you can't cause a disruption and then think that you're gonna come to someplace else like you didn't cause a disruption. So you saw that I posted it, so that's not fair to say because I did post it on my automatic page and I posted it on my personal page. I'm intentional with making sure that we know what's going on in our community because that is a problem that people feel like they've had in the past, and I try to do things intentionally. I heard what you said. What I said was, I shared the information as well. And I I don't know who that person is, but I got feedback from other people saying, how come they didn't know about it? So I was just, you know, throwing that out there. Is there a way that the community can learn more about, you know, those kinds of groundbreakings when the next one comes up. So Rochelle, the short answer to this is that, uh, and this is not my, you know, forte over here. I, I we're honestly like, you know, we're, uh, <laughs> it's not our job to, um, it's not our role, I should say, to sort of like publicize these things or like to plan these like celebratory um, uh, events. Usually that comes through the mayor's office. Uh, so I'm not 100% uh, familiar with it, but uh, I can say that these are generally targeted towards 
the partners who were involved in the mm-hmm. project and like the people who had a hand in the in the process, whether that's, you know, obviously, like, you know, related Midwest is the developer, you know, like Rodney's group is involved in this project, you know, Black Men United is involved in it. And I mean, they had, they, they brought out the whole team there. I mean, I was there, I was there standing outside the tent, I should say, <laughs> if it makes you feel any better uh, in the cold. Uh, but these meetings are generally uh, kind of uh, the select invitation group and they are SVP. So they're not open to the the, mm-hmm. the public. But it, inevitably, what I think happens is that folks put these things on social media and it kind of word spreads around. And then it kind of creates this perception that like, oh, it's a public event. So I don't blame folks for thinking that like, oh, yeah, this is a public thing. But when it comes down to it, the short answer is just that it's not. <laughs> and there's there's limited availability, unfortunately. Uh, and, you know, I don't disagree that we shouldn't do sort of like more public celebrations. I know for the Ogden RFP project that like when we selected the developer and we did the introduction to them, that it was open, that was open to everyone and anyone could show up to that. So part of it is, um, you know, also, too, I think the fact that it's winter time and they had to have a tent, a heated tent there. Maybe if it were summer and it, we could just, you know, have it more open, then it wouldn't have been like a, a you know, more uh, restrictive like that. Because I think too, it's like if people showed up, I don't think that it, I didn't see anyone being like, "Oh, you weren't invited. Please go home" or anything like that. You know, uh, it's just that it's the tiny. tent was, it was, it was at capacity and was- you couldn't get in. I, I said I, was, uh, I, I get all of that, Brian. That I'm, I was just saying, you know, based on the feedback that I got, that I saw on Facebook, because that's the only social media page I use, you know, to, I, I'm, what I'm saying is, is there a way that you could let the community know that this thing is happening, but it's for, you know, groundbreaking because I don't know how that works. And so if the public knew how it worked, then it wouldn't be so much of a, you know, people getting upset because they didn't get invited. Well, Shell, they would have been upset anyway. Oh, I'm going to let you know that it's happening, but you're still not invited. So <laughs> they're going to be upset anyway, but we're going to put this meeting out for the Ogden Corridor. And so watch how many people show up and then they're going to say that they don't know about it. I'm right. going to make sure that I have people drop things in their mailbox um, and just watch to see how many people show up. I get it. Cause I go through the same thing when I'm trying to get people to come to the meetings for transportation. It happens to me too, but you know, it's, I'm uh, just. <laughs> we got to find something that people are more angry about. Than... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> then they all show up. No, I, I kid. It's, it, yeah, it's I'm on little, your side, Brian. I'm on your side. <laughs> no, no, I, I know. I, I mean, uh, I, it's we, we've struggled with that. You know, we've handed out flyers like uh, gone to, you know, Matt Howery, who's here in the meetings, along with, you know, Rodney and Jesse and their team. They've gone out and like, you know, done mailbox, uh, you know, drop flyers and mailboxes. And, you know, we, we've got our uh, city social media. Obviously, the Alderman Scott has, uh, you know, social media. Uh, you know, presence and a uh, mailing list. We have a mailing list. So um, it, we do try our best to reach as many folks as we can. But um, it's, yeah, it's it's tough. Inevitably, we miss, we miss folks. And, uh, you know, I try to, I've, I've had a lot of like individual like emails sent to me or like phone calls to me where I try to do a better job of connecting people who may have fallen through the cracks in the past. So uh, we just continue to try to respond to those who like didn't hear about the last meeting to with their hopes that they'll hear about the the next one. Yeah. So and to I, I also take the note about the uh, about the groundbreakings and you know like I said they, these aren't planned through DPD but we certainly work with the mayor's office on it so I'll, I'll raise that that issue about like we need to maybe be a little bit more clear about what the intention is and who the audience is for it so folks aren't misunderstanding that or feeling like they're being like left out of it so um yeah a point taken thank you thank you sorry vanessa you've got your your hand up too and we can touch base on this um internally but 
would it be possible um, for you to share any concepts or anything you have thought so far on the development sites? Um, even though it's really early in our process, we're not anywhere close to actually reacting and coordinating on what's going to happen on the public way side versus what's happening on the development. We're starting to get some comments about how, how we are kind of reflecting and coordinating the vision of the corridor with what's happening on the sites as well as the Route 66 um, sort of route. So if, if we could have anything that would just sort of give us some thoughts and maybe we can bring up for discussion at this public meeting, that would be great. Yeah, I can definitely share some materials with you, Vanessa, on um, the work that we're doing on the, on the corridor. And uh, I don't know if, you, you know, we've got some visuals that we did around it too, but they probably need some updating. Uh, just about you know the investment that's going on in uh, on Ogden, but also uh, in North Lawndale as a whole too. So yeah, I can get you some things. And, That'd be great. Uh, I don't know if you put something on my calendar, we could. I can do that. Yeah, let's do that early next week. Thank you. Cool. Anyone else? Uh, questions, comments, announcements. All right, then uh, we will be back with y'all for this meeting in a couple of months. We move these to being, being every other month, but uh, yeah, please, to the previous conversation, help us get the word out about the uh, CDOT meeting uh, coming up in April. I'll send out all the uh, promotional materials for that. So, you know, there'll be stuff that's formatted for social media, uh, you know, stuff to put in your, uh, uh, email list, uh, you know, uh, print materials, all of that. So yeah, help us get the word out, uh, give seed out a hand, and we hope to uh, have a good showing for, for that public meeting. It's an exciting project. Thanks again to everyone for attending thank today. Thank you guys. Uh, as always, thank you for keep pushing new development and new opportunity for 24th Ward. It's greatly appreciated, much needed. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Everyone, uh, have a nice weekend, and we'll hope to be seeing you soon. Thank you, you too.